Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Tommy Campbell, still bald, still in my basement, and still laughing at Jimmy Kimmel destroying Donald Trump during one of the most watched television shows of the year. Isn't it past your jail time was short, sweet, and savage. Not sure who wrote that line for Kimmel, but give them a raise. Marjorie Taylor Greene broke the rules wearing a trashy MAGA hat at the State of the Union while confronting President Biden, only for him to give a strong reply that put her in her place and pretty much embarrassed the dog the bounty hunter headed Georgia representative. The serial cheater recently had a bizarre post telling women to cover up and be good examples, and her hypocrisy continues after going after President Biden for getting Lake and Riley's name wrong. Marjorie Taylor Greene also got her name wrong, and she's not the the only conservative to do so. I'll be getting into that with receipts. Plus, another exclusive, Mitch McConnell returns to this show to discuss backing Trump. There's a hilarious new genuine page from my special copy of Lauren Boebert's book and more. But first, this. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. I know retro things are getting more and more popular, but can we stick to reviving fashion and TV remakes instead of diseases we eradicated? Physicians in the USA and Canada have gone their entire careers without seeing cases. And now thanks to low vaccination rates because Facebook parents think they know more than doctors, measles have been confirmed in 17 states and 5 provinces. The virus is so transmissible that it can infect up to 9 out of every 10 unvaccinated people it is exposed to and 1 in 5 require hospitalization. The measles virus can live for up to 2 hours in an airspace after an infected person leaves that area. Community-wide vaccination is the most most effective way to prevent measles. The king of the dum-dums is platforming endangering your children and those around them. Bringing measles back is not going to make America great again. A red hat doesn't protect you from an infectious disease. Viruses don't care about borders. Your do-your-own-research stupidity is putting the entire planet at risk. It is pouring MAGA tears. I played in 35 countries for over two decades, but most days you'll find me here. Thanks for taking in this bald comedian's take on things. Please join the best subscribers on YouTube while I blast the latest in stupid and more. Terrific news. The House just passed a bill that could ban TikTok in the USA. I think it's terrific because it's one less place I have to hunt for Ivanka's beach videos. Can we just keep it on Instagram or True Social? I don't need to let China know I search for hot daughter on the regular. This is really cool. It is abundantly clear that former President Trump has earned the requisite support of Republican voters to be our nominee for President of the United States. It should come as no surprise that as nominee, he will have my support. There has been some criticism of my decision since I did say he practically and morally was responsible for January 6th. But I said I would support whoever the nominee is, even if he's an incompetent con artist that was behind an insurrection, takes regular dumps in his pants, called the troops losers and suckers, and went directly after me and my wife Chow. Yes, we remain on a last name basis, and we are in talks to renew our vows, or as I like to call them, our chow vows. This will give us an opportunity to finally combine names, and we hope that you respect our decision to go with McChow. And we think the McChows are going to wows. We're going to wow our friends and family at the ceremony. That is going to be a hot ticket. And of those that think I'm unaware of Trump's criticism, I've been provided a list of names, President Trump, has allegedly called me. And I'll read some of the alleged insults directed towards the Senate Minority Leader. Stone Cold Loser. Old Age Mutant Ninja Turtle. Broken Down Cow. Moscow Mitch. Half Cooked TV Dinner. Rhino. Now this means Republican and name only. They're not saying, oh, Mitch, you're a rhinoceros, you're so strong. No, that, that's what Don Jr. hunts in Africa. Mitch McConhold, 
Missing McConnell, Manless McConnell, Buzz Lightbeer, The Worm from Labyrinth, Kentucky Stucky, Dollar Store Battery, Great Value Battery, The Owl You Kick Out of the Nest, Boeing 737 Door Bolt, Cupcake Dog, Dumb Son of a... I, I can't say this word. It's more up Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lauren Boebert's alley. When I say Lauren Boebert's alley, I'm not talking about the bowling alley where she met her flashy husband. It was a figure of speech. So despite the insurrection, the incontinence and the insults, I stand by my decision to support the party. Even if that means being stuck temporarily, holding the golden turd tongs for Diaper Dawn. Can I get a bump? Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you having lost children myself. I understand. But look, if we change the dynamic at the border. Now, I'm not being John Stewart here. I'm just saying it's unfortunate that Biden got Lake and Riley's name wrong. He said Lincoln, and that bummed me out because he had the most heartfelt intentions. And I know that, and you know that. But when he said that, I knew the right wing would take the clown car into high gear to use it to attack him, even though he had the best intentions. This man suffered the loss of his first wife and children, he knows real pain a heck of a lot more than the guy who fakes bone spurs. This wasn't a Mercedes Melania situation. Those are pretty far apart. This was a simple slip, and they piled on him for it. But the same people attacking President Biden, well, they've made the same mistake. Now, we've all been questioning his mental capacity, and he had this pen in his hand. I had given it to him as he walked down the aisle. And when I yelled out at him and I said, say her name, Lincoln Riley, he picked up the pen and he had it right there. It's easy to read. Lincoln, but he said Lincoln Riley. And so did you just there. Say her name, Lincoln Riley. He And you're wearing the pin and going on this fake crusade as if you really care about human life. If he was playing a game of a repeat after Sporkfoot, he said it just as you did. The thing is, I have yet to see Marjorie making the rounds apologizing for this gaffe, and she wasn't alone in making it. I'm looking at the things he said when he finally said Lincoln, Lake and Riley's name. Finally. Finally said it. Um, he then kind of stumbled. And See, not that easy, Katie. It's a made-up name, so people are going to struggle with it. You should know that. You called your daughter Ridgeway. Ridgeway. With a massive creepy smile, Trump posed for this picture and spelled her name L-A-K-N. Not sure how her mom will feel about that. He also wrote, I love you. Which is, well, pretty strange, especially since he's never said it to Tiffany. When I first heard Katie talked about an abuser in her video, I was just happy to get a mention. You know, because all press is good press. But then I was told it was a Mexico story she distorted and pinned the blame on Sleepy Joe. And I promised her that nobody else would figure this out. And I wished her kids Benna Pound and Rich Street all the best. This is really cool. If you love what I do here and you can afford to help out, throw me a buck with the PayPal link in the pinned comment or drop me a super thanks with this button. And please take two seconds after this video to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. These things are free and help the show grow. Thank you. When watching? Well, I do think Jimmy Kimmel was, as could be expected, not a very good host. Was he wearing clothes? Uh, I didn't watch he it. He was, but okay. his, his, he's not very funny. You know, he's got like this background of making like crude men's humor. He appeared in blackface once, and now he's like the policeman oh, of hilarious. comedy. But all of his jokes were kind of cruel and mean. He went after Robert Downey Jr. for being a recovering addict. Ew. I think like making fun of Hollywood is great. It's a fun thing but not that kind of humor. You want to kind of make fun of them for the fact that they, you know, get these swag bags where, that are worth three times Houses. what yeah. the average... 
No one will ever top Ricky Gervais hosting anything. No one. I think it's great to see people getting roasted, and comparatively, Jimmy is pretty tame, but he still did a fantastic job. I've been to big events and seen friends getting swag bags, but it's not companies just trying to give Ryan Gosling an Xbox because you can't afford one. It's advertising, product placement, that's it. They hope to see the people using their goods and services. This network has spent the last four years attacking Hunter Biden's past, and Jimmy Kimmel isn't allowed to have a go with... Downey's wild drug life. A lot of casual comedy fans may not know that Robert Downey Jr. was in fact an SNL cast member, and when he returned to host for the first time, his monologue mocked his recent troubles that included being so high he went into a stranger's house and slept in a kid's bed. <laughs> this really happened, and I have to stress that the kid was not in the bed at the time, but it's pretty random to hear some noise in your child's room and then find a super high famous actor in their boxer shorts trying to have a snooze. He turned his life around and was given another shot first by Shane Black, writer of Lethal Weapon, who cast him in his low-budget directorial debut, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. If you haven't seen this, it's absolutely fantastic, and it put him back on the map. Kimmel was pointing out how far Robert Downey Jr. had come, and that comebacks are possible. He won an Oscar after all this. You know, you guys saw that video of Joe Biden when he saw me this week at the State of the Union. This is the hat I had on. <laughs> There's nothing that scares them worse than a MAGA hat. Well, I will say it definitely makes it easy to spot the morons in a crowd. And I think the sight of your mortadella meat stump bare feet is far more frightening than a cheap hat. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For a year and a half, I've been reading genuine pages from my special copy of Lauren Boebert's book. This really is a ton of fun. I only do this once a week, and it's been pretty wild. Let's get back to it. At some point when I was dancing in the snow, I dropped my phone. I thought nothing of it at the time because I was lost in the moment, fighting to keep warm under the moonlight while the kid is hot tonight played. I hadn't noticed the crack on my screen until my husband, Jason with the Y, took me in the back door and went to hit pause. So right now, my phone is unresponsive. So it's sort of stuck shuffling my morning hot dance practice private playlist so I can't be making or taking calls anytime soon. I just hope Ted Cruz doesn't think I'm avoiding his messages. He can be very needy. I guess once he took a bite of his petit oignon, he needed to have the entire sack. The thing is, I need Ted as much as he needs me. He isn't aware that I'm going to do politics because I was never aware I was going to do politics. And when we first started to see each other, we hit it off because I had no idea that he did politics. I've never been one to watch the news, and newspapers were just something we kept rolled up with a rubber band to whack the pit bulls off when they decided to go date night on your leg when you're wearing shorts. No. Jason calls the old paper we keep our red laser defenders. Ted was enchanted by my lack of knowledge, and it's probably why he so gracefully looked past my teeth the way I look past his breath that smells like dill pickle chips, crown royal, and cheese curds. You know me with my smile as white as Donald Trump's father's sheets, but when I first met Ted, I still had what Jason called his old corncob face hole. Eventually, he revealed that he was in government, and I said, you mean the free cheese people? And he had to baby step me through his position. As much as he loved being just another guy, when I was brushing his Cuban werewolf back hair with the mini Calgary Flames hockey stick he carries, he would tell me more and more about him. I may have been the one he called his petite oignon, and sure, I did make him cry when we finished, and I did wear a lot of clothes to draw out the excitement, but Ted, Ted was the one with the layers. So many that when the boys started finding random bags of Doritos on our doorstep, little did they know that their surprise Cool Ranch breakfast was actually a gift from a Texas senator, and their mom was the chip for Seven Layer Dip Cruise. It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Boozburb's book, let me know in the comments, and I'll see about reading another page sometime soon. Trump 2024, Truckers 2024, and Mike Lindell 2024, and beyond. Mega tears. You stupid. She genius. Mega tears. Pathetic bunch of losers. Leave Mike Lindell alone. Mega tears. Manless McConnell. Buzz Lightbeer. The Worm from Labyrinth. Kentucky Stucky. <laughs> Eventually, Ted revealed that he was in government, and I said, You mean the free cheese people? <laughs>
takes dumps in his pants, <laughs> called the troops losers and suckers, and went after me and Chow. Yes, we remain on a last name basis, and we are in talks to renew our vows, or as I like to call them, Chow vows. Chow vow. Jason calls the old paper we keep our red laser defenders. <laughs> Jason calls the old papers we keep our red laser defenders. <laughs> You know me with my smile as white as Donald Trump's father's sheets. This will give us the opportunity to finally combine names. And we hope that you respect our decision to go with Mick Chow. And we think that Mick Chow... When I was brushing his Cuban werewolf back hair with the mini Calgary Flames hockey stick he carries, he would tell me more and more about him. And we hope that you respect our decision to go with Mick Chow. <laughs> Eventually, he revealed that he was in government, and I said, You mean the free cheese people? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please stick around and check out another one of my videos. Say hello in the comments. Find my stand up on Spotify, stream by millions, and add me on Facebook and Instagram. It all helps. Be cool, be kind, take care.